Welcome back to Sunrise Daily, Mr. Kenneth Oridika joins us now, also a legal practitioner. Thank you for coming on this morning. My pleasure. Well, the big one now is, uh, after all of this that is going on, I think the, the DSS, there are reports that they may be arraigned this week. Uh, in the midst of that, you have the NBA, who have changed their mindset, saying, look, they should step aside. And the NJC, I think they recanted that on some reports that, yes, they will investigate some of this. But in the meantime, no more gifts, nothing going on. At the end of the day, looking at all of these perspectives, are we on the right path to reading the judiciary of corruption? Thank you very much. Maybe I'll start with a small story. Your wife gives you food. As she's bringing out the food, there's a fly on the food. She takes insecticide, deadly insecticide, and sprays on the food in order to give you, in order to ensure that this fly doesn't uh, 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 mess up your food. You eat the food and die. Your wife had excellent intention. She didn't want you to suffer. That's why she tried to kill the fly. So intention is totally irrelevant. There's something called law of the path. And law of the path is, you come out of the express road now, from this studio, if I turn right, I'm going to Ibadan. If I turn left, I'm going to Lagos. So if I intend to go to Ibadan, meanwhile, I turn left, I'm ending in Lagos, my intention notwithstanding. Now, we are all, against, well, most of us are against corruption. Because we can't say we are all, because some people are the corrupt people. So most of us are against corruption, whether in the judiciary, in, in the executive, wherever, but particularly in the judiciary, because that's where that's my own, my own constituency, the legal profession. But the way you fight it is very critical. If we recall, when did corruption become pervasive in Nigeria? It was after Murtala Mohammed, after the purge when there became uncertainty regarding the tenure of, of uh, civil, civil and public servants. So as soon as they got in, they started to try to grab, don't know when they were fired. Prior to that, they had certainty of tenure. Now, if, so, uh, with all the wonderful intentions that General uh, Moussa Mohammed had, he did a major damage that has still not been corrected up till now in, uh, to the body, uh, body policy of Nigeria. The same thing is about happening to the judiciary. When you go, and I'm not talking about the legality of the words because it could be legal, but it is expedient to go and break down doors at 1 a.m. when you could easily have arrested them. We're not talking about some truck pushers who are itinerant, you don't have their, their addresses. We're talking about judges of the, well, judges of, of a, a course of record. That is, records of record like High Court, Court of Appeal, and Supreme Court. So their movements are practically known. You go there, you don't have to say that you're coming, like I said, you have your, your arrest warrant. You go there, pick them up in the morning, 6 o'clock, 7 a.m., 8 a.m. Or even go to their court, so because uh, some other thing will let you. Go to their homes, 7 30 in the morning, pick them up, search their houses, collect all you need to collect. Why, why create this? This thing makes me wonder at times whether people are actually interested in fighting corruption or they just want to make some noise, whether they actually, uh, uh, want to sabotage even the president's intention to fight corruption. Because with all this noise, re realize, and as lawyers will know, that when there's a doubt, because I'm talking about criminal cases here, when there's a doubt, it's usually resolved in favor of the accused person, not in favor of the prosecution. That's why you say you prove your case beyond reasonable doubt. Doubt will be resolved in favor of the prosecution. So why do you want to just make all the noise and risk losing the case? Are we just interested in making noise or in actually bringing the people to book? You know, if you, if you go by what so many lawyers have been saying, uh, we just had Dr. Bayomi, and you see the passion and emotion with which they highlight some of these problems, I think perhaps you wouldn't even feel bad that anyone should come on such homes at about 2 a.m. or even 3 a.m. He feels that there's a, a deep seeding rot in the judiciary and it must be attacked uh, whether in the thick of the night or in the morning. I've also been a lawyer for 35 years, so I'm a very senior lawyer. And I've been in practice. In fact, the system is totally messed up. Good. This, the, the corruption is there. Incompetent judges are there. The, those who, do, lack, who lack knowledge are there. Then there are excellent judges. With, with, with such, I mean, people that you can send to any part of the world, I'd be proud of this a judge representing Nigeria. Now, it's not about the emotions of being emotive. So we can be as passionate as we want to be, but the law is still the law. So you bring out some that become that is, appears tainted, in whose favor will it be resolved? You want to eradicate corruption. 
Meanwhile, you bring us something that be resolved in favor of the accused president, who might actually be corrupt. So you think that the way they have gone about this so far, to some extent, may what invalidate the evidence? It may, when, when the evidence is tainted, it will result in favor of the accused. Evidence so when, tainted? Yes. Because, when, yes. Because, you see, what we're looking at here is we want to eradicate this corruption. It's affecting all of us. I know what I've suffered in court. I'm not going to call the name of the judges anymore because I, I wasn't there when they gave the person the money. But what happened was obvious that something had happened, had gone wrong. And again, where are the lawyers? These judges don't go and take bribe. No, somebody goes to give it to them. And a lawyer that was called to buy two, three years ago will be afraid to go and meet a judge. So it's usually the senior, senior lawyers. Is, is it true that the, the law is silent on the giver, but it's about the taker? According to what law is that? We, have we changed our, our criminal? So you can give bribe and go free. But then you know, the only person who takes uh, Maybe it's a new one. I don't know about that. Well, I know that when, in matters of uh, bribery, there are two people. You give and take. But if there's a new law, I'm not aware of that. I thought it's more commercial law. But, I, that, but it doesn't mean I, I'm ignorant of a criminal law. So I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, it'll be nice to know about this new law that where you give bribe and go away and then pick up only the person who you give it to. What do you suggest we do so that uh, at least when people talk about fighting corruption, we won't see someone from either the judiciary giving an excuse based on what they've seen with the legislature or the executive, so that across board, everybody's equal before the law. No, first of all, the fact that you arrest me now, I say, I beg, somebody else was stole. How is that a defense? Is that a defense? For instance, some judges are saying, uh, I went to somebody's house. That is very annoying. You see, we grew up to know judges to be next to God. In fact, God. Now all of a sudden, they, they have a uh, fit of clay. A judge is selling, a Supreme Court judge is telling me that some, a politician called him. He entered somebody's car and was driven to the person's house. And the person who brought, brought him stayed in another room. I went in to discuss what. Why should he even go to his house? Why should he even go to the president's house? So I mean, President Black calls. He has more questions to answer. Who does that? The judge in question. Yeah, he, even if he didn't receive any money, why would you, in the first place, vent, and, and undertake such a venture? In fact, for that alone, somebody like me would say, if you're talking about being passionate, I would say the man should actually not just step aside, but be advised to re re resign right away. Because it is totally unacceptable to me and to people who are brought up the way we're brought up in law practice. Okay. Mark, what?